Right, hello everyone. Um, I'm quite conscious I haven't spoke or posted anything in a long time. So what I thought I'm going to do is on a Sunday, I'm going to do uh, a video or a post or something or with uh, self-help techniques. Okay, so if you have anything you need or want to know about, just message me or leave a comment um, and I'll do that next week. But this week, what I wanted to talk about is something I've seen loads and loads of recently and it's something which is really avoidable. Um, and that is loads of people have taken up running. This is a long video, man, so just you know, get a cup of tea or something. Um, but yeah, loads of people have taken up running over, over lockdown and I'm seeing quite a lot of new people. A lot of new people who've got hip and knee pain, which has come on since they started running. Um, and then you look at them and you try and figure it out and then you go, those knackered converse you walked in on, that's not what you're running in, is it? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they wonder why their hips and knees are hurting. Yeah. Your running shoes are your only expense as a runner. You've got no gym membership. You're not paying for anything. You've got a t-shirt and then a pair of shorts and Christ, mine have lasted about four years without changing them. Um, and the trainers, which I do change, yeah? And it's your only expense. So if you look at it that way, you know, you're paying 20 pound a month to go running as much as you want. So invest in your trainers. Um, I'm not a trainer expert by any means, okay? This is just a kind of an idea of what I do, but I'm not a trainer expert, okay? This guy is Simon at Soul Obsession. I can't rate him enough. If, you, if you're going to take up running, go have a chat with him. He will tell you what you need and he will sell you the right training. He won't sell you. The good thing about Simon is he won't sell you something expensive. He'll sell you what you, you require. Um, so that's my sales pitch on Simon. That's not a sales pitch. That's genuine. I only, I only recommend people who I personally use and rate and, and he's one of those people. But just so you have no idea of what I do, I do a mixture of, well, I mainly do trail running, but you can't always trail run. So I own three pairs of trainers, okay? So I have a pair of road trainers. I like ASICs, so I've got um, these ones. And what I'd say, the reason I've got these here is because I need to change these. I'm going up on a, a Saturday, okay? Because the, uh, there's an Australian physio called Brad Beer. And he writes a lot about how you know when your trainer's knackered and time to change. Um, and he's, uh, he's got these kind of tests, but you know, I kind of do that and I think, mm, probably not right. But mainly I just poke in. So your trainer should have a little bit of sponginess, a little bit of give, you know, and this is getting pretty solid. Um, but the main thing is I can feel it, you know, when you put a new pair of trainers on, it feels great. And then that feeling starts to go after a while. Um, but what I would do, I mean, I call these road shoes, but I've worn these on, well, not these ones. You're totally changing that, they're full of crap. Uh, <laughs> I wore those on the London Brighton, okay, which is a trail run. Um, but when it's solid on the foot, they're absolutely fine. But I, so summer months, I'd alternate them. I've got these Salcone things, which are kind of like a mix. I've just worn these actually, that's why I'm such a mess. I've just come in off a run. Uh, but they're kind of halfway between road and trail. I quite like them. So I was out all around Old Serum and Stratford Subcast and all that. And these are great, even when it's in the muddier parts, as you can see. But by alternating, I get more life out of my trainer. Yeah, so if I'm wearing these every day, you're going to wear them out faster. So I alternate a bit, yeah. I like to give my trainers at least kind of 48 hours to recover, especially like I did half marathon today in these. I won't wear them until Wednesday, just to give them time to, to bounce back, right? And then for the winter months, yeah, proper trail trainers, okay? You can't beat proper trail trainers for proper trails in the winter. These are ASICs, again, they've got some kind of Gore-Tex lining, but they've got really good grip uh, and they're fantastic trainers. So in the, in the winter months, I'd alternate between my Sulcomy and, and my ASICs again, yeah, to, to give a bit of wear on each one. And if you break it down that way, you know, you're not really spending that much money, you know, each pair of trainers. They say, you know, true... Trainer track is put about 250 miles on a pair. I don't really go with that personally. I mean, you could use that as a guide, but I just tend to, I mean, these probably, got, you know, they're starting to get a bit tatty, but I don't have to replace these until the, till the winter. So I'm not gonna wear these until it starts getting proper wet. And so you can, you know, you can get longer life out of them. 
How long is stealing on trainers, man? Probably not that helpful. But the main point is, try and have two pairs. I would try and have two pairs, alternate them. I know it's expensive, but it's your only expense. Yeah, there's nothing else to buy. Um, and replace them regularly and just go and get advice of a proper trainer professional. If you're not in Salisbury, then you know, go somewhere else, but find someone who sells trainers, who knows trainers, yeah, and get advice off them. Don't run in your Reebok classics if you, you know, helps me out, you know, keeps the lights on, keeps the kids fed, but I don't want to see people for unnecessary injuries, you know. I want to see you out running on trails, not sat here going, my hip hurts. So there you go, six minutes on trainers. Um, so yeah, so next week I'll do something more interesting, but just let me know what you want to see and I'll come up with something. Thanks.